dealing with clear parts and we've turned our attention to the cockpit glass. As the cockpit's going to be posed in the open position, we need to make sure that it looks as solid as the rest of the airframe when viewed from different angles. So there's going to be a, a few layers of paint going on here. So we've masked the canopy up using Tamiya masking tape, burnished down with a cocktail stick and then cut out with a brand new knife blade. We've made a makeshift handle with a bit of blue tack and mask the inside of the canopy. Now some people could actually mask the framework inside the uh, canopy but I prefer to use the uh, method that probably a lot of other modelers use and that's to spray the interior colour down onto the clear parts first so that when viewed from inside it looks as though you can see the cockpit interior colour. So we're going back to what we used for the cockpit in the very first video which is uh, Attacker C044 Dark Gold Grey. We're just going to add some to the airbrush colour cup. Attacker's quite thick. And we're just going to check our flow. And what we're going to do is we're going to start building up this interior framework colour. Just so we start losing the transparency of the clear parts. Just leave that one to dry momentarily and we'll turn our attention to the main cockpit so a little bit too wet that mix I think you were in danger of it creeping under the masking tape so we're just laying, it, laying down what will be the colour that can be seen through the canopy uh, framework on the inside trying not to spray it towards the open uh, cockpit end. I'm just going to lay down quite a thick coat now. And let that dry. So now that grey section's dry, we're just going to make it light fast. So by that it means that we're just adding a base of coat, more colour up, so that uh, we can't see any light through the framework and it's got a solid look. So for that, we're just going over with it's actually Guns Tire Black. So this just makes your cockpit look as though it's made out of metal when held up to the light, not clear plastic with the light shining through. So don't forget when you view this canopy from the inside you will see the grey that we put down prior to this.
So working with lacquers it means that we can uh, zip through these stages but they are going to take time to dry so it'd be a good idea to leave these now for a good couple of hours before we progress so now that the black is dry we're just going to give it a quick coat of the MRP grey primer just to match the undercoat that was given to the main model and then once we start applying the camo colours to the canopy it's not going to look a shade different <laughs> So after our quick spray session, these are now going to need to be left for probably 24 hours for that paint to fully harden. There's quite a few paint layers gone down there, so they need to be dry before we can start administering the top coats. And these will simply be placed onto the model and the camouflage pattern continued up and around the clear parts. So the cockpit's now been painted, it was set aside to dry and left overnight. And we've just put the top colours on and make sure everything lines up and it's time now to remove the masking. It's important to remember before you remove the masking to put your final varnish coat on. In this case we're using GX113 Mr Colour UV Cut Flat. And now we're just going to set about removing the canopy masking. So we're going to do this very carefully and we're just going to get a scalpel blade under a corner and then just peel it off with a finger pressure just making sure that we don't tear any of the paint. Just going to lift a section of the mask. We don't want to exert too much pressure on the clear part, we don't want to crack it. And there's the main clear canopy unmasked and revealed. Pleased to report that uh, the masking job is not too bad. And now we're just going to repeat the same with the front windscreen. And just remove these. So all in all, not bad canopy frames. Hopefully the camera can pick that up with my fingers. Perhaps it might be better. So all that's left to do with the front windscreen is to tint the armour plated centre section. So with the canopy room, the masking removed from the front windscreen you can see the interior colour showing through on the inside and all that's left to do now is to mask the armour sensor section so we're just going to pop some tamiya tape in along the framework on the using the framework as a guide on the inside Making sure we've got everywhere and make sure it's masked and then we're not going to get any of the paint onto any of the other clear panes. A quick view from the outside. And we're going to do this, we're going to use Alclad Armoured Glass. Okay, and we're ready to go. So we're just going to build this up in very light coats until we get a wet look. And then hopefully the camera will pick that up that it's just a shade different in the centre. 
can dry that off. And you just stop when you've reached your desired shade of green or your opacity if you like. Hopefully if I bring that camera in you can see that through the white of the paper. Probably more visible if I remove the masking and we pop it on there. I don't know how clear that's showing but that's the cockpit work done. So the all important dry fit. Just to check everything and everything look, looks neat and tidy and it's a job well done. So off camera I've set about weathering the undersides and the blue undersides of the model so hopefully the camera can pick that up. So it's looking quite distressed and worn. We've uh, toned those yellow markings down and reference indicates that possibly the underside of the ailerons was left in the aluminium colour factory finish. So uh, they were sprayed alclad aluminium just for effect. Certainly reference photos show that that could possibly be the case. So we're now going to complete the final stages of the weathering process before we apply a gloss coat. So we're going to add a wash. So as always I'm going to use Flory Models Dark Dirt Wash. I'm going to tone it down just a tad with a few drops of water. Just I think the dark might be a bit too dark on the pale blue. We'll see how we go. Uh, just set about adding this to all the panel line detail. It's not pretty, just slop it on as we've seen in previous videos if you've watched any of mine. It's a clay base suspended pigment in water so there's no fear of anything reacting with each other. After all that hard work that you've done on your painting there's nothing worse than getting a reaction with your weathering products and destroying your hard work. So we're just working around just painting it on. recesses, all the raised and engraved detail will respond quite well to the effects of the wash. As you can see it's collecting in the engraved detail which is where it dries and then when it's removed you leave the dry pigment behind leaving the desired effect. So we're not coming venturing onto the upper surfaces at this moment and we're just concentrating on these lower sections. There's still a few little pieces to add but they'll be painted up and added separately. Just so that it's easier we don't break anything off while we're uh, working with the decals and things like that. Remember to get everywhere. I mean, you'll notice we've still not attached the flaps, they are painted. They're just asking to get broken off while well, we're still handling the model to such a degree.
I'm just double checking the overall effect just to make sure we've not missed anything. May as well add a bit into the wheel wells as well. So with the wash, uh, it's best applied to a satin or gloss finish. The gloss finish will make it really easy to remove. Satin finish it will trap a lot more pigment and a matte finish it will stain and is quite difficult to remove depending on the effects that you, you wish to portray. So we just want to bring this lovely kinetic panel detail out. I've done most of the weathering already so we'll set that aside to dry now before we commence its removal. So there's always something to do in the project. So while we're waiting for that wash to dry, we're going to have a look at the propellers and engine housings. So these are made up of a number of parts which I'm just removing from the sprue. These will all need cleaning up before they're assembly. So we'll set about that. Bit missing there, where are we? So we've oh, not there. So we've got we've got all the parts. So we've got the two two sections of engine casing. So we've got all the parts, we've got the two sections of engine casing, spinner, back plate, and the rear engine section. And we've got propeller blade. And I've already sprayed the tips yellow. So these will need the uh, parts cleaning up. So I'm doing this carefully. I'm just going to remove the sprue attachment point as best and carefully as I can without causing any damage to the part. And we're just going to conduct a dry fit to make sure everything does line up as expected. And everything is good, which it is. So, to remove a little bit, that's quite a substantial uh, attachment point for such a small part. So I'll remove that with those. That's going to take a little bit of uh, careful cleaning. There we go. So we'll just get that uh, sponge sander on there just so that we don't uh, flatten off any of the uh, surface because uh, it's uh, curved. So we'll just work our way around making sure everything's good. Just removing any trace of the sprue attachment point. It's been a back plate. Just going to make sure that it's all good. It was an invisible part of the model right behind the propeller. And then we're just going to check this, the fit of this just to make sure everything goes in as it should. It's a bit tight that, but it does go, it does work. That's going to need a bit of uh, a sand, I think. There we go. 
So what we're going to do with that is with it in place and we're just going to sand the whole side and what it means is once we come to uh, secure these together you've not got the propeller blade in the way at the moment so you can sand the contour make it a nice join and then when you come to assemble it with the prop the uh, propeller blades in and squeeze it all together everything will line up and you won't have to do any filling or sanding so the prop uh, blade has a key on it and that sits in there and then the spinner pushes in making the propeller blade and these two engine sections join together with the rear piece so I've already completed one side so the body was sprayed aluminium and masked off to replicate what I saw in references a blue part of the engine there was uh, was sprayed up prop spinner painted spinners gloss black props aluminium with yellow tips we've already seen that we have put the yellow tips on and that just sits on the front of the model like so it does look quite good when it's there so I'll set about assembling this one and then we'll get them attached to the model so with the propellers out the way the wash has well and truly dried on the underneath of this Picara so we're just going to set about removing this so with the flurry wash if it's applied to a gloss surface you can usually just get away with rubbing it gently with a piece of kitchen paper for any stubborn areas just a little bit of moisture helps For hard to reach areas you can use a cotton bud. So we just need to get this out of the uh, crease of the engine nasal and the flat recess. And the same on the other side. starting to look really nice and weathered now the effect that we wanted is uh, revealing itself so we'll just work on the centre fuselage section And just to get into the uh, cannon trough, we, we don't want to remove it all, but we don't want as heavy as application as we could see there. So we're just going to tease the end of the cotton bud out, put it in the recess, and gently wipe away. I'm trying to get a symmetrical look. To both areas. There we go. So as you can see it does look quite nice. And we just uh, all that lovely panel detail that Kinetic have uh, supplied is coming really visible. And we're also getting a 
the look of a worn used aircraft. As I said, they were actually in combat. And there we go. So that's the undersides essentially finished. No more weathering is going to be needed on there. So it's just a simple case of adding the decals and then adding all the bits that would be easily broken off, such as the undercarriage and the aerials and antennas and things like that. So overall quite a nice effect. So that concludes part five of Kinetic's 148th scale Pacara build. In part six we'll look at uh, getting some of these smaller details on along with the decals hopefully. I shall work on the upper sides in the same manner as I've, as you've seen me work on the lower surfaces uh, in preparation for part six. So join me then. Please look after yourselves and take care until next time.